Hi, this video is a little different from my usual ones. I was, as I was doing some work, I was looking around at my shop at all the tools I have all over the place and uh, a bit of it looking at the mess I have everywhere too, but uh, looking at the tools and it got me to thinking, I realized that not everybody has grown up with power tools all over the place like I did. And I know talking to guys at work, sometimes you're asking me about different tools and what they should be buying to do different types of work. So I just thought I'd post a quick video about the overview of the various power tools that I've used in uh, rebuilding this boat. Uh, kind of, I'll just go through them, just a quick overview of what I've used as, as I did the demolition work of the old rotten stuff out of the boat. And as I've gone through doing the work through the boat and how essential I think the different tools are and what you can use them for. For those of you who are uh, new to this channel, my usual videos are about the rebuild of this uh, 24 foot Sea Ray boat that I have. It's a small cabin cruiser, so uh, what that means, it's got sleeping room in it and uh, a small galley, cooking area, small head, bathroom in non-boat terms. Uh, and I've been totally rebuilding this boat. So take a look at my older videos and you'll see uh, what I've done in here so far. So kind of going through the tools sort of in the order I've uh, used them in, in rebuilding this boat. Uh, at the beginning, one of the most useful tools is a circular saw. If you don't have one, get one. The cordless one is really nice because it's so versatile. Uh, they're usually smaller than the corded versions. And uh, as a result in with the kind of work that I've been doing, they're a little bit easier to handle and you're not getting tangled up in the cord. For the demolition work, a circular saw is an invaluable tool for, uh, for example, uh, cutting the transom, uh, especially on my smaller boat. I used it for cutting slices into the skin of the boat and cutting through the wood, but I could set the depth so it wouldn't cut through the outer skin. I just put an old blood blade in it because cutting through fiberglass is really hard on the blade on the teeth, but it just, works great for that kind of thing. Same thing with the floor. You can set the depth to cut just through the floor and you can cut sections of the floor out just to get at the foam, uh, the wet foam underneath and things like that. Later on in the construction, uh, circular saws are great for cutting plywood, for cutting any kind of straight or almost straight cuts. Uh, they're just a great tool for all around everything. Um, you kind of need to have one. So uh, when you get one, make sure you get a good one. The next uh, demolition tool that's really good is your re reciprocating saw, sometimes called a sawzall. That was Milwaukee's term for it. Um, but a reciprocating saw, again, a cordless one is a good way to go. Great for um, cutting old rotten, rotten stringers out and things like that because you can just kind of cut through in spots where you can't get with a circular saw and you can cut in curves and all kinds of weird angles and things like that. They can also be used for cutting metal if you need to, as long as you have the right blade on them. So they're a great all around tool for, for all kinds of different things. The next uh, really valuable tool, you kind of have to have one to do work on a fiberglass boat, at least the level that I've done, is a angle grinder. On an angle grinder, you can put all kinds of things on them. So yes, you can put a grinding disc on them, you can put a wire brush on them, you can put sanding discs, you can put cutting discs. When I was um, doing the demolition in the boat, getting the old stuff out, I, I own more than one angle grinder. So what I did was I kept a big coarse uh, sanding disc in one of them and a cutting disc in the other one, a thin cutting disc. And the cutting disc was great to get into the spots where I couldn't get in with the circular saw or the, or the reciprocating saw. And I could cut really close to the hull and cut the fiberglass off the top. And then once I got all the stuff out of the way, I could then use the sanding disc on the other uh, grinder to grind down right down to the hull and get rid of all the old uh, bits of the stringers to get down to clean fiberglass. So between the two of them, I mean, you can do it with one grinder. You just have to change attachments I have more than one, so I didn't have to change attachments back and forth. It just made it go a little faster. Absolutely an essential tool for any kind of work in a uh, boat like this. For that, um, because of the length of time you're using them, you really want a plug-in tool. For the reciprocating saw and the um, circular saw, cordless is a lot more versatile. The next tool that most people have is a drill. Um, if you don't have one, go buy one. Uh, get a cordless drill. A cordless drill can do almost everything a corded drill can do, can do. And again, when you're working in places like this, not tripping over the cord is great. 
Secondly, a cordless drill works better as a screwdriver for driving in fasteners than a corded drill because a cordless drill, I don't know if you've ever played with them, but a cordless drill, generally when you let go of the trigger, it stops almost right away. Whereas most plug-in type of drills have a momentum to them. They just keep going. They don't have that electric braking um, that a cordless drill has because of the gearing and everything inside. And so as a result, uh, you can overdrive the screw. So cordless drill overall is the way to go. And nowadays with the battery life, if you get a good drill, you can basically run the battery down while the other one's charging and the other one is charged by the time your first battery is dead. So they're really a good way to go. Along with the cordless drill, make sure you have good selection of drill bits and uh, a set of hole saws is great. You can also get things like wire brushes and sanding drums and things like that to use on the drill, sometimes in spots where you can't get in with the grinder. So it's, they can be useful for that as well. The next tool that is um, almost essential is a jigsaw. Now, circular saws are great for cutting straight lines or almost straight lines. The problem is in a boat, when you're cutting the material to put back in the boat, very few things are going to be straight. There's going to be a lot of curves, weird angles, things like that. A jigsaw allows you to cut those. So I use them for the stringers. I used it for a lot of the cutting of the transom pieces. When it comes to the galley cabinet work, this wood that you see behind me here, all of that was cut with a jigsaw. Uh, you just can't cut that nicely with a circular saw. I mean, you can cut some weird things with a circular saw, but you get a lot of waste because of it. Whereas a jigsaw, you can kind of follow almost any line within reason. Jigsaws can also cut metal if you have the right blade on them. For cutting the wood for the transom and the stringers and things like that, any blade will basically work. Uh, when you're doing cabinet work, especially if you're cutting from the good side of the wood, you want to get a down cutting jigsaw blade. Normal jigsaw blades cut on the upstroke. Uh, it keeps the saw from hopping and jumping too much. The downside is that it will tend to splinter the wood a little bit on the top side if it's, it's a bit brittle. Whereas if you get a down cutting blade, sometimes they're called uh, laminate blades, they cut on the downstroke. Now you've got to make sure you hold the saw down firmly so it doesn't jump uh, when it's cutting. The nice part is that it reduces, it dramatically reduces the amount of splintering you get on the top level of the wood. Any of the splintering will be on the backside. Anyway, that's just one of those things with the jigsaw. Um, in my opinion, an essential tool that you have to have. You're not going to get a whole lot done if you don't have one. Another nice tool to have, not mandatory, uh, is a table saw. Most of the things you can do with a circular saw, but a table saw is really nice if you need to make some nice long straight cuts and uh, you're trying to uh, rip down some trim. Also, if you're uh, when you're making the cabinet work, if you're making a bunch of shelves all the same size and you want everything to be exactly the same width, it's nice in the table saw because you can set the width and then cut them and you will end up with nice straight square cuts. So a table saw is really nice to have if you have got the space and you've got the money for it. If not, you can get away with doing things with a circular saw by hand, but it's a really nice thing to have. Another tool that you'll need is a sander. A random orbital sander is really nice to have. Try to get a good one. The cheap ones will work, but if you can get a good one that has a variable speed, as well as, well as, a, um, as, well as one where you can change the direction, That'll make things a lot nicer, especially if you're trying to sand the edges of something. Sometimes it's nice to uh, make it spin the other way so that you're trying to reduce splintering, things like that. So that can be really useful. You'll use this throughout the whole thing. Uh, you'll need it when, if you're doing any laminating of fiberglass and you, for example, you put a layer of fiberglass on the transom and then you let it cure. And if, especially if you're not using laminating resin, you need to sand the surface before you put another layer on. Sometimes a really good random orbital sander is the way to go. Same thing with any plywood you're using, you need to smooth out the surface. A random orbital sander will, will help you with that. Um, again, a really useful tool to have. Make sure you have, get one with a vacuum port so you can suck up the dust. So that brings me to probably the most important tool in boat uh, rebuilding is a good wet dry vac, one with a large diameter hose. If you don't have one, you will end up with a pile of dust larger than your boat and you won't be able to find your boat under the dust. So uh, yeah, you're going to need one and get some lots of filters for it. When I was grinding out the inside of the hull, the old bits of the old stringers, I had the, the vacuum just going with a large hose, uh, kind of just the hose laying kind of in the general direction of where most of the dust was blowing off the grinder. 
and it sucked up most of it and made a huge difference in the amount of dust blowing in the air. So definitely worth having one. Also, you can use, like I said, on the sander to suck up dust and things like that. Um, also, if you're working on the boat outside and you get water in the back, if you get a wet dry vac, you can use it for sucking the water out before you start working again. So it's, it's really a useful thing to have. And as I mentioned in my most recent video, another very important power tool in your overall work in a boat is a sewing machine. Because you want to do any upholstery work, you want to do any headliners inside the boat, anything like that, you're going to need to work with vinyl, potentially with canvas if you're trying to fix the canvas top on a boat. Any good sewing machine is a good tool to have. You can refer back to my previous video, look for an old Singer 1591 or a 201, one of those old gear drive sewing machines, and uh, it will do a fa fabulous job for you. Anyway, um, this was just a quick overview of kind of the tools um, that you kind of need and why you need each of those tools. A good way to buy a lot of the tools, especially the cordless ones, is look for one of those cordless combo packs. Um, a lot of the manufacturers make them. Often they're a really good deal. You get a few batteries, a charger. Look for one that has a good cordless drill, circular saw, reciprocating saw, and that'll kind of cover your cordless tool things. Then pick up a good sander. A sander, sander, angle grinder, things like that should, in my opinion, be corded tools because of the length of time you're using them and generally where you're using them, plugging them in is not a problem. So uh, the other thing is make sure you buy good quality tools, uh, especially with cordless drills. I used to work at a store uh, selling tools many years ago, and uh, often we would see tools from the same manufacturer and uh, they look the same on the outside use the same uh, style of battery and one cost 100 or 150 dollars more than the other one and what was the difference one was made for homeowner do-it-yourself use the other one was made for professional contractor use and the difference was that initially you wouldn't notice a huge difference but uh, after a lot of heavy use the homeowner machine would start to break down uh, it would run a lot hotter, it would kill the batteries faster, and the gears would strip faster and things like that. So especially for this kind of work where you're taking on a big project like rebuilding a boat, make sure you get some good tools. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of fun, but doing work when you're fighting with your tools is no fun. Uh, in my opinion, get good tools so that all of your work is put into actually rebuilding the boat not fighting with your tools. Regarding brands of tools, if you look through my videos, you'll see the brands that I'm generally using. I'm not saying that they're the best ones. I have tried some other brands. Uh, I won't go into detail on that. Most of them have broken and stopped working. So uh, I stick with what I know works. And uh, hopefully this is helpful for some of you guys. If you have any questions, please post them below. I will try to answer. If you like the video, click the like button, subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss anything else that I post. Anyway, and see you next time.